Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Destiny and welcome back to another tutorial. In this one, we're going to go ahead and start working with the serializers, views, URLs, and we're going to be creating our fully functional backend API for the user authentication. And this is going to be the last tutorial in the series. So you want to see other videos like this, do make sure to drop a like, consider subscribing as you really mean the world to me. And also you want to download the source code that we're using to build out the tutorial, check out my GitHub repo and you should be able to download it for totally free. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Now, the first thing that I'm going to do is go ahead and open up my code editor and um, we can go ahead and close up all those other files over here. I don't think we need any of them again. So after we've closed out all this in the API, you simply want to create a new file and you want to call it serializer.py. As simple as that. I don't know. I, I, I pretty much um, always make mistakes whenever I want to call the serializer over there. So this is it over here, serializer. I just want to make sure that it's the correct spelling. Yeah, there you go. That's it. So in the serializer, what does this help us do? Now, using Django REST framework, we will be able to easily use, you know, a, a serializer class to automatically serialize the fields into JSON and back to Python objects when needed. So we simply much created a, a serializer.py file in here. And in there, what we want to do? Firstly, we're going to go ahead and import a couple of things. Firstly, I want to say from api.models, I want to go ahead and import the user model. And I'm also going to import the profile model, as simple as that. Now, let's import a couple of things. For example, I'm going to say from... Django dot country dot odds dot I think that should be dot password validate yeah password validation yeah that's it we want to go ahead and simply import validate password and I also want to import from rest framework so from from rest framework there's a lot of things that we're going to be importing from rest framework let's start with the from rest framework simple simple JWT dot serializers we want to go ahead and import token obtain token obtain per serializer that's what we want to, that's what we need for this one and we also need token um, okay yeah let, let's just stick with that one for now and another thing that we want to import is from rest framework dot serializers or we can say from rest framework let's import serializers instead so i'm going to be showing you guys how to work with all this and um, I also think we need from, okay, yeah, we're going to import that when we need it, okay? So yeah, the next thing we're going to, the first thing that we're going to do is go ahead and create a class user. So we're going to create a user serializer, just like this. And in here, what we want to pass in, remember the serializers that we imported over here? We're going to grab that. And in it, there is this um, method called model serializer. Okay, we need that. And the first thing that we're going to do is create a class meta. And also, I'm going to say model should be equal to what? The user model that we imported at the top, just like that. And what should the fields be? So the fields are going to be firstly the ID, then the username, and also the what? The email. So I want you guys to um, know, I want you guys to have it in mind that serializers works just like Django forms. Okay. So hopefully you guys know that it's only in Django forms that we do things like create a class meta, then call this user forms and call this um, forms the model form. Hopefully you guys already know all that. So it works the same way as Django form, but this time around it's so that we can be able to serialize this Python um, objects into json okay so that we can be able to use it in our front end hopefully you understand so after we've done this the next thing that i'd want to do is go ahead and create a by token update pair serializer okay so by token update pair serializer and what's what would that help us to do? So it is used to create a token, more specifically the access and the refresh token. And it's only gonna create this token if a valid username and password are provided. And when we go ahead and decode, decode the access token, that's where I'm gonna be working with a client. It's gonna give us the username and the email and pretty much anything that we pass in there, okay? So I'm gonna show you guys how to even go ahead and pass in more um, fields into the my token pair serializer. Okay, so how do we go ahead and start working with this? It's it's quite easy. All we need to do is go ahead and create a class. And um, you could we could call this one whatever we want. I'm just gonna call it um, my token obtain. Yeah, let's just go. Let okay. You know what? I'm just gonna copy this over here and let's paste it down here and make sure that we just add something over here like my so we don't you know you know conflict it with the with this one that we have over here already. Now it's pretty much gonna extend from this one. So I'm just gonna copy it and paste it in there. As simple as that. 
Also, you guys should notice that you could call this whatever you want, okay? You call it Uncle Bobby or Shake, Shake, Bake, whatever you want. So after that, over here, we're just gonna pass in a class method, as simple as that, and that's because we simply wanna come over here and create a new function. I'm gonna call this one Get Token. So as you can see, it just goes ahead and return this for us. Hopefully, that's pretty much what we want. So instead of just returning the token, I'm gonna pass in a variable here, token, and I'm gonna say token should be equal to this, okay? Now, this token is going to hold a, a whole lot of things for us. The first thing we're going to pass in is the full name. So remember what I told you guys before that if we decode the token, that we're going to get the username and the email. So now if we decode the token, we want to get things like the username, the profile, the, the user name, the full name, the email, the bio, the image, and all that. So I'm going to say user.profile.fullName. So why did I say user.profile.fullName? If you want to understand how this works, that's because in the model, I used a one-to-one -one field to the user to the user model so we can say something like user.bio or user.profile.bio user.profile.fullname user.profile.verified and everything is going to work perfectly well so that's why we did that now there is there is a there are a couple of things that we still need to pass we want to pass in the the username i'm going to pass in the the username but this time around it should just be user.username not user.profile.username i'm also going to pass in the email so copy highlight this email not username email and it's going to be user.email and how is the user.username username user the email see user dot username user dot email we don't have username or email in here but whenever i want to access anything from me here it's going to be user dot profile dot full name or user dot profile dot image hopefully you guys have an understanding of what's going on so i'm also going to access the bio i'm also going to access the the image remember that we have the image and also the verified here yeah, we also have the very fight and i want to make sure that that's the correct spelling of the verified so i'm just going to copy this one that we've got over here and simply paste as simple as that so yeah that's pretty much what we have now finally we just need to go ahead and return what i'm going to return token okay so remember when we we're returning super remember when we did something like this right we returned super but now instead of just returning it like that we assigned a variable got all this from the from the token and i'm simply going to go ahead and return the token so i just want to be sure that you guys are following along with everything that's going on when we are done with that let's go ahead and create the register serializer that one is pretty much going to help us to register a user it, the name already sounds you know explanatory serializer just like that and in here it's just gonna um it's gonna, it's gonna inherit from the serializer dot model serializer as simple as that and what are the things that we need firstly i'm gonna need a password so um it's just a password like this so password should be equal to what i'm gonna say serializers the char field and what do we need in here so i'm gonna say write underscore only now i'm gonna explain what's what's going on so write only should be what true and required should be what? Required should be what? True. And um, what else do we even need? Okay, let's let's use the you know about the validator thing that we imported above. So I'm gonna use it now. I'm gonna say validator validators should be equal to what? Validation pa validate password that we imported from the top over here. So that's what we wanted wanted the user to do okay i think that's pretty much it and we also need to do the same thing for the password too if you want you could put this on one line i don't know we could put on one line as you can see this is all we have um I'm, okay let's do the same thing for password too i just wanted to space it out so you guys can see everything that's going on but i think one line is going to make it more readable right yeah so for the for this one we only need we don't need to validate anything okay so let's just get rid of the validators for the password too. We just need the right only to be true and the required to be true. As simple as that. That's pretty much what we need. And after that, let's go ahead and create a class meta. So remember how we did the class meta thing for the for the user. This one, the model is gonna be what? User. And what else do we need? The fields should be equal to what? Let's start off with the email. We need the email. We need the, the username. I'm gonna show you guys how all this works. We need the password, obviously. I'm gonna grab the password. I'm gonna put it in there. And we also need what? The password too, as simple as that. That's pretty much it. Now let's go ahead and define a validate function. So define validate. And this one is gonna take in self and it's also gonna take in attributes, okay? 
Now, what do we want to what do we want to say? We want to say if attributes. That means if we have um all these attributes in here, then what do we want to do? We simply want to go ahead and actually we can go ahead and and check for the particular attributes that we want. So we want to say if attributes password. Um, let's just say if attributes password. Um. Okay, let's just say if attribute password is not equal to attribute password two. Yeah. What do we want to do? Let's go ahead and raise a, raise a serializer validation error. So I'm gonna say raise serializer dot validation error. And what is gonna be the validation error in here? We're just gonna say um, I think this is supposed to be in a dictionary. Now I'm gonna say password, and we should just say something like password fields does not match. Okay. So password fields does not match. That's pretty much what you want to do, guys. And um, we, let's just go ahead and return validate. Okay, there is a problem. So this is supposed to be that, and this is supposed to be indented, and this is supposed to be return attributes. Okay. So hopefully you guys are following along with everything that's going on. I'm going to show you guys how all this works. And when we've done this, I think that's pretty much what you want to do for the validate. Now let's go ahead and create a user. So I'm going to say define create. So the create function is simply going to take in the self. It's also going to take in validated underscore data, which is this one that we, we have done over here, or pretty much the validated data. I'm going to show you guys how to use that. Now what do we want to use? The first one is going to be user, and this user should be equal to the user object dot object dot create. Now, what do we want to create? The username is going to be equal to what? Validated data, not validate password, but validated data, this one that we have over here. Validated data dot what? Username. So instead of using the dot, I'm just going to call validated data, then I'm going to drop the username. And also, what do we need? We need email. So I'm going to say um, email, validated data, email. So the way we are getting this, is pretty much the same way we passed in attributes and we said if attributes password so we can still come over here and pass in attributes then say attributes of this and attribute of this and everything is still gonna work perfectly well well you know i just want to use the validated name so it, so you know we differentiate everything that we're doing but don't get yourself confused you can call this whatever you want and just make sure that you pass it in here and it's still gonna go ahead and grab this from over here Okay, hopefully you guys understand everything that's going on. I, I don't mean I don't want to confuse anyone. So after we've done all that, let's just go ahead and say user.set password. So set password is a method. And what do we want to pass in? The validated data should be what? Password. Okay, the validated data is gonna be the password over here. So that's how we do the password. We don't pass the password in here like this. And why do we use the set password? That's because we want to be able to hash the password and save it in the admin instead of saving it to its plain text. Okay. And by the way, we don't even want to pass it in here because we don't have any password field in the model over here. So it's going to throw an error. We simply want to do that the Django way. So when we've done that, I think that's pretty much what we want to do. Let's just go ahead and save the user. So I'm going to say user.save. As simple as that. Okay. So after we've done all this, Definitely, we need to return user. A function must return something, even though it's null, even though it's none, even though it's one, two, three, or even though it's a string, but a function must return something. And what we want to return is user. So that's pretty much it. Now let's see. Um, I think I'm no longer following the manual over here. And um, yeah, when we've, we've done this, right? Let's go ahead and create the URL now. So this is the URL. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come over here to the API, create a new file, and I'm going to call it URLs.py, as simple as that. And I want to import a couple of things. The first thing that I'm going to import is um, this over here. I'm going to grab this, and let's paste it down there. And I also want to import parts. I'm going to say from Django.URLs, I want to go ahead and import parts. All right, there you go. Now, the next thing that we need to do is just go ahead and pass in the URL pattern and all that. Take notes, we're still gonna be creating some things like um, views. We don't have any view for now, but well, I just wanna work with what we've created so far. Okay, so um, we have this. Okay, let's go ahead and say URL patterns. You could use this, and I'm gonna pass it apart. For this one, I'm gonna call token, just like this, and I'm simply gonna say, for now, we don't have any view. 
we're gonna create a view later so let's let's leave this the way it is right now hopefully we don't have any error yet so you can see everything is working well we're gonna go ahead and create a view before we configure the url okay i don't want to confuse you guys by creating urls before creating views so let's create views then we're gonna create url